Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'm going to discuss the way the Mail on Sunday yesterday took leave of its censors in a puerile attempt to cover for Boris Johnson by blaming his inadequacies on Deputy Labour leader Angela Rayner's legs. And in the process has not only shone a spotlight again on the rampant sexism in politics, but might even have cost the so-called journalists responsible as well. This may well have backfired on them. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So it was all over social media. In the UK yesterday, I gather there was some other news around Europe uh, yesterday as well. But for those who don't know, the Mail on Sunday tried to run with a story that Boris Johnson has basically been useless because... Angela Rayner, Labour's deputy leader, has been distracting him, poor little darling, with her feminine wiles. In order to try and demonstrate this pictorially, they showed two photos of Rayner. The first was her first sat across from Boris Johnson in the House of Commons. Now, that is no good, because there's a bloody big table in the way, and then the dispatch box is above that. All Johnson can see of Rayner from there is her head. So then they used a second photo of her sat on a sofa on a breakfast show. Problem is, Boris Johnson's not there, is he? Also, Angela Rayner wearing an above-the-knee skirt is flaunting herself. So how come it wasn't when Theresa May did the same? The whole thing was, of course, insulting to everyone. It was insulting to women because it yet again pushes this moronic, patriarchal narrative that if women get unwanted attention, it's, it's their fault. It's not the men who can't control themselves. It's insulting to men because it implies that we have no self-control or discipline. It's insulting to female MPs because it is a green light for them to receive more abuse, which I'll be coming to in a moment. It's insulting to Rayner personally because she wouldn't touch Boris Johnson with a 10-foot barge pole. It's insulting to Boris Johnson because it suggests that he is incapable of discharging his duties in the presence of attractive ladies. Come to think of it, it's also personally insulting to all the women in Boris Johnson's cabinet. Because if the premise here is correct that Boris Johnson can't function in the presence of an attractive lady, then it must imply that all the women in his cabinet are repulsive harridans who were chosen for their ugliness so as not to distract the Prime Minister in cabinet meetings. I actually can't think of anyone the article does not insult. Because if you suffer yourself to read it, it's clearly written from the point of view of posh, privately educated man who is afraid of powerful independent women. A classic patriarchal establishment reaction to working class woman who has the nerve to stand at the same level as one of their own. There is one oft quoted passage that suggests Rayner's motivation for falling back on her, you know, feminine charms is because she can't compete with Boris Johnson's Oxford Student Union debating skills. So it's also insulting to Oxford and their debating society. Boris Johnson is so bad at debating that he failed to turn up to several during the 2019 general election campaign. He pushed Rishi Sunak to do at least one of them. He was replaced by a block of ice in another. And there was an interview he won't go to as well. So in there were at least three that I can think of without checking, at least three debates or interviews that Boris Johnson agreed to attend, but then didn't. If that is the behaviour of someone with awesome Oxford debating skills under their belt, you would think anyone else who's trying to big up their Oxford debating skills would be thoroughly ashamed right now. You know, when he is forced to debate, all he can ever do is lie and bluster. He's never held his own in a debate in his life. And as a result, not only does this article insult the various groups I've discussed so far, it also insults journalists. Because this is the Mail on Sunday, right? It's a mainstream newspaper. It can afford to pay for quality journalists. This article makes no sense on any level. You know, nobody with a shred of intelligence or critical thinking skills could possibly miss the massive contradictions within it. Never mind the issues of common decency. It's just a mass of contradictions. And yet it was still written by someone employed by a mainstream newspaper. It still went through whatever passes for an editorial process at this mainstream newspaper. And it was still published by this mainstream newspaper. This does not suggest to me that British journalism is not exactly attracting the best and the brightest. So it's an insult to those in the profession who are better than this. And beyond the stupidity of the article, it also raises a very serious issue. Sexism in British politics is rife. 
Loads of female MPs stood down at the last election. I don't mean lost their seats. I mean didn't even want to stand again. For example, a sixth of all the women that were elected as Conservative MPs in 2017 stood down for 2019. Several even cited the, the, the abuse they received as reasons. Now, not all of it is sexual abuse. Several male MPs stood down uh, too soon as well. There were a lot of MPs stood down at the last election. Politics is brutal. Like when it comes to normal political scrutiny, you know, I can understand it's not for everyone. But you should know what you're getting yourself into when you stand as a candidate. There's going to be a lot of scrutiny over you and it can affect your, your, your life, your pattern of life. Uh, all of a sudden, lots of people paying very careful attention to what you do. That's part of the rough and tumble, you know. But we can't accept or normalise abusive behaviour. Scrutiny is one thing and that can be too much for people. Abuse is, is something else. Like... I criticise politicians, mostly conservative ones, but I would never abuse them on the basis of their gender or sexuality, colour of their skin, even background. Only on the issues that are related to their suitability to discharge their duties, which can include intelligence, but won't include their background. It puts people who are especially targeted by abuse off. And who are those who are particularly targeted? Well, those who aren't from a certain background, those who aren't white, and those who aren't male. So Angela Rayner is a target of abuse on two of those counts. And let me tell you why this has to be fought robustly. And, and as I say, not just a matter of common decency, which is reason enough. I'm a vocal supporter of proportional representation. I am so because I want to see a parliament that represents the people as closely as possible. But I also understand proportional representation can only go so far. It can only really represent parties. So if, if a particular party gets 43% of the vote, as the Conservatives did, they should have 43% of the seats. But that's all it can do. It can only be representative as far as political parties are concerned. But Parliament should also be representative of people. The UK is predominantly white, right? Using the latest figures in the House of Commons, 86% of the population are white in this country. But 90% of MPs are white. So there's disproportionately more MPs who are white than exist in the general population. That's not representative. But you could argue it is getting better and we may not be that far away from some balance. You know, we'll then need to look at individual ethnicities to see who is still poorly represented. But right now, if we can get an increase of 26 non-white, net increase of 26 non-white MPs into the House of Commons, then you've got a reasonable spread there, at least in terms of white and non-white. But the gender balance is way worse. Like just over 50% of the UK population of women, it's like 50.6%, slight, slightly in favour of women there. For balance, that means there should be 329 female MPs. But in 2019, the general election returned 220. Now, that's a need for a net increase of 119 female MPs. In fact, you have to increase the number of female MPs net by more than 50%. That's powerfully not good enough because female politicians face many barriers. There is the abuse, which also affects those who are not from certain backgrounds or are non-white. But there's also the pattern of life that rules out a lot of women from politics because that's something else that needs addressing. People should be aware of just how badly Parliament represents the people of this country. You know, how are we ever going to get, for example, women's problems taken seriously when they are the slight majority of the population, but barely a third of MPs? But anyway, on to slightly brighter news. As the story rumbled on yesterday, it generated the expected condemnation. And I figured this was the aim. Poking at the culture wars, trying to distract, trying to get people to go, oh yeah, Boris Johnson's not a dickhead after all, it's all Angela Rayner's fault. But they misjudged it so badly that even Boris Johnson had to come out to defend Rayner. Not just that either, but the article itself he attacked, he described the sentiments within it as misogynistic and deplorable. Then it was suggested that the Women and Equalities Committee Chair, Tory MP Caroline Noakes, should be maybe having a little word with the Speaker of the House of Commons if, if the political editor responsible for this should maybe have their Westminster lobby pass removed. And Noakes agreed. She said she's going to do that. So the dozy bastard might end up with no pass for Westminster, which would be a bit of a problem for them. Because like whenever you hear 
in a news story, oh, senior Tory MP says this or former cabinet minister says this, things like that. Political journalists talking about off the record statements from MPs, which are always of interest. It's from quiet little words with them, often in the House of Common Bar or one of them or some quiet little corner. If he's got his past taken over off him, he'll find it a lot harder to even pretend to do his job in future. So there we go. May well have backfired for him personally and the paper. But those are my uh, most immediate thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And until next time, I'll see you later.